Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial and in this one we need to talk about the instrument layer and the uh, the instrument uh, selector, this one, uh, you know, I'm going to show you an example. So, okay, so first we're going to start with the instrument layer. So what this means is just a layer. It's just a box where we can throw many, many things. And in this case, I'm going to be using the second track and I'm going to show you what we have. a simple pia piano you know just simple keys right so on this instrument layer we have one layer one single layer and this is this synthesizer with the tool now if i wanted to i could just remove the synthesizer turn off the layer and we will just use this as a normal trend channel without the layer and it will just still work right same thing it will it works the same way but in this case i just want to use it right here so I'm going to go maybe, uh, you know, enable this. Now, remember, uh, I kind of uh, move this away from here. So now we have one single layer and inside each layer, we can add whatever we want. We can put a synthesizer, we can put a tool, a reverb, whatever we want. So, okay, so this synth uh, has already has uh, some effects. So if I double click it, you can see that, you know, we have some chords, some crushing, some chords and blah, 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 blah. All right, so th this is not what I want to show you. So right now we have one layer, right? So every time that we play, we hear one instrument. The main point of the layer is that we can add more layers with different things. And uh, in this case, we can add more instruments. So we could have like five synthesizers playing at the same time for different patches. We're gonna get, of course, uh, uh, you know, a, a blend of everything. So for example, I'm gonna give you just a small example. I'm gonna right click right here on this layer and I'm gonna duplicate, it, right? Okay, so now we have the same key, the same, uh, you know, the same synth, the same sound on two layers. So this now, since it's the same sound, is going to get louder. That's why I'm lowering the volume and we are getting pretty much the same. If I go to normal volume, we get a lot. Because it's just playing the same sound, we just get it loud. Right? So how can we, you know, how can we fix this? So let me just do something like that, because I made a mistake right there. I'm going to go and throw a tool within the each layer, right? I'm going to go right there, just remove it like that, remove the tool, and just eliminate this layer. So now on each layer, we have the same sound, and the only difference is nothing. They, it sounds completely the same. But maybe what I want, I want to create kind of a, uh, you know, a double tracking. This is a very common technique where you track or you record, you know, kind of a manually. Uh, the, the same sound twice, and of course, since you're human, you're gonna be playing. Uh, you, you're gonna be playing it uh, different the second time. So this tiny difference differences will create a, a stereo enhancement. It's double tracking. You can do triple tracking, quad tracking. In this case, just double tracking. So since this one, it's the same as this one. I'm gonna go to the tool, and I'm gonna say, dude, you're gonna be playing on the left, and you are gonna be playing on the right. So now we're going to get the same vol the same sound, but, you know, with less volume. But everything comes from the same instrument layer. Notice that this one gives you the left and this one gives you the right. And right here we can manage the volume. But for now, I just want the same exact, exact amount of volume. So you have a global gain control. So if it's going out of, you know, proportion with the volume, it just can go down on the volume. Pretty simple, right? Okay. So now what I want to do, I want to do a double tracking, and this is the magic of the instrument layer. I can offset or make some changes on the second track or the first track and create a, a, a stereo spread or stereo enhancement. So I'm going to go and do the double tracking uh, trick. I'm going to bring the Humanize, which is a, a, you know, a plugging, a feature that we get on Bidwick. And this one, what it will do, it will uh, listen to the incoming MIDI notes and it will try to humanize it. It will just offset the timing. Some notes are going to be rushing. Some notes are going to be dragging. Uh, the chances, you know, how, you know, the chance of, uh, the chance of, uh, you know, how, how much, uh, how many notes are going to be dragging or thrashing, uh, you know, the chance, it's because it's random, of course. And then, of course, it's going to randomize the velocity. So now the second one, is going to be randomized with the timing and the velocity. So it's going to be a little bit different from the first one. See, if I do this, if I play it again, we get a stereo enhancement because we are double tracking. And if I go, of course, and do more, notice that 
it goes wider. Because we are double tracking. The second track, this one, is different than the first one. By small proportions. Alright, let me just lower the volume. Deliver it. So that's it. We are just double tracking. And it's just, you know, very simple. So the other way of double tracking that we, we do, uh, you know, what we do the whole time without an instrument layer is just going to the actual track, doing the duplicate right this, and this one is going to be left, this was going to be right, and it's pretty much the same, you know, we are adding the same thing, but right now we are just doing it on a single track. Now, of course, since uh, if you're going to be adding, I don't know, 10 instruments or 10 synthesizers, remember that this will, of course, uh, you're adding 10 synthesizers. It's like adding 10 tracks. 10 different synths so it will of course you're going to see the impact on the ram depends on what you're using okay so that's it that's the instrument instrument layer now of course you could use it like this or you can use it to uh, pair it with different synthesizers okay so i'm going to go to the example number three and on this one i have an instrument layer and i've created three different layers now of course to create a layer you can just drag an instrument or you can click right here and select whatever it is that you want to bring now on this one, little low, I have a, a, a pulse synth uh, with some strings, and um, all of three, I have the same patch, you know, the same exact patch. But I'm making some changes, because maybe what I want of this synth is to play on the low frequencies. So I've changed the pitch right here, the range, so this is going to be playing the lows. It's playing the same thing, a single key, but it's the lows. Right, so what I want, then I want to add some highs, so I did the same thing, but this one, it's now playing on the highs. You know, it's a second and second. Now, if we play uh, everything together, we get a big sound, because this one is playing the lows, and this one is playing the highs. At the end of the day, we can, of course, unsolo, or we can just maybe say okay the highs are just too loud so i'm just gonna go and lower the volume on the highs and we get a better blend right so pretty simple so at the end of the day again all of this is just experimentation so we have the lows we have the heights uh the highs so maybe i want to do a little bit of movement so i'm gonna go and add the same sides but this time i'm gonna be moving this i'm gonna use the four uh, of range and i'm gonna be you know cutting a little bit but what I want to do, I want to move this from left and right. And this is what I'm doing. I'm using an LFO right here and moving the panning from left to right very fast. So if I solo this sides, it's going to sound like this. It's the same patch, the same patch. But we are doing, of course, a little bit of more modulation. On this one, we are not doing anything. And on this one, I'm using the parse EQ, the parse 8. And I'm kind of uh, going up and down on the cut up so we have this you know rhythm pattern and then moving from left to right so i'm using this as a sound effect so let me just start again i'm gonna go and play it so now i'm gonna be playing it with the heights and remember this is the sides and we can even go lower on this one because it's a background kind of a movement and then we'll bring the lows and on the same track with the instrument layer, we have a bigger sound, a complex sound. So this is the main point of the instrument layer that you can, you know, just layer different things and then get, you know, uh, whatever sound that you're looking for. Okay, so let's talk about the instrument selector. Now, of course, they are kind of a related, but they work very, very different. So the instrument layer lets you layer different instruments and they are all going to be playing at the same time time unless you of course drop the volume or you mute them right they all play at the same time all the layers now the instrument selector is going to play one single one single layer at a time okay so i'm gonna go and show you what i have right here so it's just a single layer i have a tiny kind of a base acid line and i have a three different patches and they are just different sounds so i'm gonna go play the first one I'll lower the volume so this is the first sound, it's a bass and it's aggressive, that's why it's T1000 or 100. It should be 1000, you know, Terminator, <laughs> that's fine. So then we have another one, which is 
much smoother, which is a different base. Now you can click the yellow dot and it will just shift to that sound. Great, right? Now notice that it's disabling the first one if you want to go back, we just click it. Very simple. Now I'm going to go to the third one and it's a different base. It's a more acid base. Now right here, whenever you go there, you can drag and change the different sounds kind of instantly. Or you can just click the arrows and go up, down and, you know, start shifting through the different instruments. So you have two ways pretty much, you know, most commonly of using this. You just can, you know, drag different patches that you think and you're maybe working with the track and you think this is going to work and maybe you try it with the whole track and you say, you know, this one is just not working. Uh, okay, let me try this on the fly. Uh, okay, so this one works a little bit better for the track. Or maybe on your track you want a very aggressive bass, right? On the first, I don't know, eight bars, you're going to be playing this one. And then it goes to a bridge or something like that. So you're going to be duplicating uh, this patch and you're going to be changing some of the uh, some of the settings, like the cutoff. You're going to make it less aggressive or something like that. And then, of course, you can automate this just to, of course, go right here and, uh, you know, and just change it to the second sound instead of the first one. That's, you know, pretty much what we are doing. What you can do with this. You just can shift different, uh, you know, different layers and change to a different sound whenever you go on the arrangement view or, you know, whenever you, you, you're just using this. Now, there is a different use, which is very uh, kind of a creative use. What you can do, you can start uh, you can start shifting through the different patches in very different ways. So I'm going to go and bring an LFO and I'm just going to bring an LFO, just an LFO, nothing, nothing weird. So uh, here we have an LFO, you know, I wasn't going to bring the other one because it's a bit more controlled. I'm going to be bring the classic LFO, the classic LFO can, you know, I can go and do uh, time, you know, hertz and everything else. I can even do bipolar. So for now, I'm going to disable the bipolar. So the main point of all of this is that what you can do, you can click on this modulator and you can go and start shifting and move around the different, the three different patches. And I'm going to go a little bit faster or yeah, one, four. Now I'm going to live in one, four and see what happens. And I'm going to start in the number one. So notice that it's playing the one mainly. That's the main sound because we have it selected and everything else. It's kind of a shift in between the second and the third one. Now, if we go slower, we can, you know, and just by using this, you can create a new sound with three different patches. Of course, you can go really fast and it's going to go and give you a new sound. <laughs> it's really great. Now, of course, this depends on whatever uh, whatever you're using to shift or move through the different uh, layers or instrument. Of course, you can change the curve and it's going to behave a little bit different. In this case, linear is better. Now, of course, we are doing a sine wave, but we can do different, different waveforms. And this is going to change how it sounds. Or even you can do random if you want a more random sound. Right, so super great. So, of course, this depends on uh, what you're using. So, for example, maybe I don't want to use an LFO. I want a kind of a more controlled uh, behavior. So I'm going to go and bring the steps. So the steps works the same way. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and do this. Now, I'm going to go and put everything at the top. So if I play this, notice that whenever we are at the top, the only thing that it's playing is going to be the acid one, the last one. It doesn't matter. We have this one selected. If I go all the way down, the one that is playing is going to be the first one. And if I go to the middle, in this case, it's going to be playing the middle one, the Foley. But now, you know, again, we want to control this a little bit better. So maybe I want to start doing something like this. Or maybe I want something like that. And you can just start messing with this, just playing around with the sounds. 
And you started getting, you know, very cool sound, very cool creative sounds. And all of this, again, is just experimentation. Just playing around with this and just checking if you, what, what you get. Right. So that's it. Now, the rest is completely up to you to, you know, to sit around and play with some different modulators. Okay, so let me show you one more thing, because maybe you don't want to do this kind of a LFO or movement, uh, you know, move through the different uh, layers. You want to do something a bit more control, like I've, uh, I've told you before. So, of course, this one is controllable by, uh, you know, with the automation. So if I go right here and open this and go to instrument selector, notice that if I go to instrument selector, you get an index. So the index is going to be whatever index you have right here. So we have one, two, and three. So when I do something like that, if I go right here at the bottom, notice it tells me it's uh, you're going to be playing one and uh, BS 100, blah, 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 which is the first patch. If I play this, it's going to be playing this. But maybe at this point, I'm going to change it to the other one. And maybe at this point, I'm going to be changing maybe to the middle one. And we're going to... All right, so you get the point. And right here, you can create your own custom movements by doing a little bit of automation. Now, of course, it takes a little bit more work and it's less random. It's much more control. So the same thing goes for the other things. I'm going to go and toggle active and I'm going to go and do something like that. Uh, I'm going to go right here. We know that we are playing the three layers. Maybe I don't want to play the three layers at the same time, right? Maybe I just don't want. But the thing is that they are all always active or we mute them or we solo them. So what you could do, you can try different things. You can go to the instrument layer and you have the on and off. You have the gain right here or you have the each, you know, kind of a each instrument. So what you can do, you can maybe go to the low and do the mixer. Maybe I'm going to be introducing the sides first. I'm going to leave that one low, alone. Then I'm going to go to the mixer and select the volume of the low. And what I want to do, I don't know, uh, I want maybe a kind of a slow introduction of the low sound. So notice that we instantly get the automation point right there. So I'm going to be increasing the volume on this one and I'm going to make it zero dB. And, uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. I'm going to go to the instrument layer and I'm going to go to the highs. I'm going to go to the mixer, but this one is going to be playing a little bit later. Right. So I'm going to go there and do something like that. And again, I'm just, you know, kind of a, making this making this on the go. So now instead of playing all at the same time, first we get the sides and then we slowly introduce the lows. And then we do the same thing with the highs. There you go. So everything you need, if you don't use automation in your life, in your predictions, uh, you're missing a big part of, you know, making a good track. Automation is essential for pretty much everything that you do on a track. All right. So hopefully you like this. Remember to like and subscribe and to check Patreon. This is how you, we, uh, you keep the lights on on this channel and, uh, and see you on the next one.